So, hello there guys, I'm in between weekend mode where I just want to close my eyes and shut myself out from the world, but also I have found my cat. So I'm in between two modes. Uh, slightly have one's jogging top on, slightly have one's dance trainers on uh, and leggings on, and um, slightly have my it's fucking cold winter. So anyway, I thought I'd put a mask on for you. So apparently, if I lived in my own home, I could probably get £85 for this room with bills included to rent. I could probably actually get up to about 150 here in Portsmouth. So I'm back to absolute square one in my life because when I had Liam, Daniel, Aaron and Faith, it was about being a single mother. Now, I wasn't like a... There's a difference in being a single mother to being a lone parent. You are either parenting, co-parenting with the father or you are with the family or you independently are actually like a lone parent. With Liam and Daniel, I wasn't a lone parent because two seconds, because Shiloh's just taken over my bathroom. Um, I wasn't a lone parent. Yes, I'm coming. Where are all the balls at the moment? Shall I bring ball, ball pit for, shall I bring temp with a ball pit through because he's washing anyway? Yeah. yeah. I'll bring it through because it, they all need washing anyway. You can do it at the same time. Um, my bathroom's flooded yet again. And I could do with this coming in anyway. Oh, shite. I've just ripped it a little bit more. Ugh. Right, I'll leave it for you to get out. Two seconds, I've just got to knock everything over. Right, that can come in here. And I will just... Yeah, I will release some of the balls into you. Um, literally, look. I'm dealing with flood. Again. Right, there you go. I need to be careful being... Uh, a mother in the bathroom with my son because I'll end up with Facebook bloody uh, pulling me in. I'm so annoyed. Right, there you go. Don't get my phone wet, mate. I'm coming out. No, I'm coming out because you can't get my phone wet. No, you can get them. Well, no, you can get them. There you go. You get them. I'm leaving. I've got stuff to do. No, because you've taken over by going into the bathroom when I was trying to sort the flood out. And I'm standing in here getting my trainers wet now. So you can get them, otherwise I'm getting soaked. I've got literally... And what's annoying me about this is downstairs, to me, has just had the new baby arrive, like, literally last week, yeah? And they've only just had the paint work done downstairs to repair from the damage from the last time my shower room went over into their flat downstairs. And it's like... It annoys me because... I'm facing consequences of actions. It's like, I had a friend come round last night. It was actually the person who moved me here. So I said to him, say social had put me under one year. So Britney Spears has just been released from 13 years, yeah? And that's five, but she's just been released from 13 years of what they call sort of like a sense of things over there. But over here, it's, it's pretty much the same for parents, whether it's mental health whether you're a single mother, whether you've got disability, whether you've got learning difficulties or whatever, people don't understand that we used to live in institutional living for all of this. So what you all know to be like was SEN, which is now um, Healthcare Management Plan. So what you know to be that, I just look like I've got a mask that I keep on, don't I? Look, oh, look. Um, Love you. Um, so, if you take take the Rain Man, for instance, because we can all relate to the Rain Man. Pretty much all of us have seen the film The Rain Man. Hands up, likes and things if you've seen The Rain Man and you understand what it is that I'm talking about. Now, the Rain Man didn't just have autism. He had something else as well. And whenever anybody had a were not considered perfect, yes then they were put into institutions. 
all mental health was put into institutions. It's like that young lad's been in for a long time, diagnosed with autism and held in an institution. Now, what is really annoying about all of these diagnoses and coming from the perspective that I come from with one, having a psychology degree, two, was previously a youth worker, three, I'm a trained coach and interventionist, and four, I have dealt with and... Obviously, when you go through your own trauma, you, manage, you you deal with a lot of people's problems as well. And it keeps you in a place where it stops you dealing with your own. So obviously you listen and things like that. But it was different for me because I was doing it in official capacity because I was trying to um, oppose what psychology was saying about those who were abused go on to abuse. And all this, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And it's all about belief systems. It's all about how somebody can measure and monitor somebody. So here in Great Britain, we're one big think tank, right? So for anybody who understands what Stockholm is, um, or, uh, well, no, that's Stockholm Syndrome. So Stockholm Syndrome is basically, if anyone who's been in a war situation, they've been captive and they learn to become very reliant on their captives and even actually form a relationship and they stay in them situations because they don't know anything different. Take like, um, what's her face? Glesbine. Glesbine would be a prime example of that. She would be a prime example of a child born to a father who is like a big wig in the heads of the papers who would have been frequenting all of these parties. We're only just talking about university students um, becoming escorts in order to be able to pay for their university fees. That, that, that can of worms is only just starting to open up. I think it's Durham University that's really pushing on this to go, look, you know, we've got to offer the support and help for people who are escorting um, for university. And they have to. It's like when I went to university, the first thing I ended up with is what they call one of your cases. And that's somebody who's gone to university. They've left home for the first time at an elder, older age. And then they don't want to go home. And the reason that they don't want to go home for Christmas is because they're going back to an abusive situation. They're going back to a situation that they've now come out of the world and gone, hang on a minute, I've met people that this doesn't happen to. I've met people that did have that have a different family. I've got an opportunity to go off and do these things with my friends that are happy, okay, they might have a few drinks, they might do all this, but they, they're, they're, they're young adults at the end of the day and they don't have responsibilities and they don't have children. They can flit in and out whenever they like. When you become a mother, you gain a bag. That bag is a nappy bag. It has absolutely everything in. Once you gain toddlers, you have to take a safety bag. That safety bag is just in case any accidents, anything that's gone. Once you become a mother, things change. Things change because you think of consequences of actions more. If I do this, can somebody get to get to my kids? If in the meantime, I'm dropping my kids off at school, can I get to the dentist? Can I get this done? Have I got my doctor's appointment? Can I get my legs up in the spirit the stirrup to be able to even get contraception put in to make sure no more children? And it's like these things that 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 other people don't necessarily talk about. We're only just talking about female hormones. We don't even talk about love. I mean. We're so used to in this world to just talking about the concept of fucking within the LGBTQ community. Yes, people want to fall in love and get married, but at the moment they're just thinking about where they can stick their penis in their vagina. And I laughed my head off with my friend the other day. I said, could you pull a transgender? He went, if I didn't know. And I woke up in the morning and thought, oh, fuck, yeah, I'd probably do it. Um, but if I actually knew, I don't know. It was rather funny. So anyway, what I'm trying to do again with this room and this space, and where I was with Aaron and Faith, Liam and Daniel, to where I am exactly the same with Elijah and Shiloh. Lots of people will go out there, oh my goodness, does that woman keep having kids just so she can stay on benefit system? Hell no! Hell no! Um, my children grow up, get their own lives independent, then mummy ends up living on her own. So if I end up with a massive big house with seven, eight, nine bedrooms and my children decide that I'm a complete fucking cunt and they decide to bugger off and have their own families and do things, then you're stuck with a really big house to clean and um, rattling around at Christmas with nothing to do. Hello! Somebody's come to say hello. This Christmas, obviously, there is two little boys here. Their dad is obviously going to be about. It's my little Elijah. Oh, calling my neck around, dude. You've got a wobbly tooth, haven't you? 
And we're waiting for your wobbly teeth to come out. Yeah, all, all wobbly. Yeah, all wobbly. Right, what are you going to do with all these toys? I'm going to fall. What are we doing with all these toys? I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall. Gabby. What are we doing with all these toys? What, we're keeping them? No, we're not. No, we're not keeping them. So, anyway, I'm back to the whole concept of au pair, what the Americans call a nanny. But it's the same thing. When I first started going to see to the MP, oh, my goodness. I can't show you because I'll get done. He's got um, a big beach thing wrapped around him. You've got a swimming pool there. No. You can't let any more come out because it will flood down to out downstairs. It's not funny. And it's not funny. It's not funny living in a flat when you're constantly flooding the people downstairs. It's not. But if I had a bath in there, it would be so much easier. They're not meant to be in there at the moment. They're just playing. But it really isn't funny because when people live in flats, most people don't have insurance in the same way. No, that's not good. That's, just, that's silly behaviour. Um... And also for me as well, I don't like having to keep closing my curtains because you've got people in front of you. And even just here, look, it's like they go to their bedroom and they're like in my, f there's that dozy woman that's been, you know, I don't want to show them, but it's like I have to deal with it all the time. So for me, this isn't it. Can I waste my time and put in for a managed move? But the problem is, is even as a council tenant on Universal Credits, I would not be able to rent this room out, even though it would cover my rent. Now, that's the funny thing. I need the toilet. Go to the toilet. But Shiloh's not letting me. Oh, Shiloh, he's coming to the toilet. He's not in your way. Um, so, I have the same problem that I had before, that I have to be in my own property, but mortgages can stop you. Elijah, Shiloh. You! Yeah, Don't you. shout at him. You go to the bathroom. Right, I'm going to go and sort these two out. I'm just trying to get on to straighten up for another week. It's thank God my kids don't go to school in the morning. Thank God.